Hi, my name is Fiji Matavish, and welcome back to another DCG tutorial. So, this question we're going to finish off 2013 dynamic mechanisms question, and we're going to do C4 Part B. Okay, so this one is a CAMS question, and as always, read through it again. The CAMS question is a lot of information in the actual question seven, so make sure you read through it and understand all the information they're giving you. So, a 3D graph on the right shows a radial plate CAM which is located inside the bailing machine. 2D drawn of the cams also shown in figure C4 below. Okay, so there's your 3D of it. The inner minimum, minimum diameter circle has a radius of 18 mil. So that's your camshaft. Okay, minimum radius is 18 mil. And a portion of the cam profile from A to B is an involute of the circle. So A to B there is an involute of that circle. All right. Oh, sorry, involute of the circle here at the minimum distance all right so the radius so the inner minimum diameter so the closest approach basically is 18 mil I should say sorry this is radius 8 the radius 18 is the minimum radius there of the circle all right uh, cam rotates in anti-clockwise direction and has an inline knife edge follower the camshaft which is hatched in the diagram has a diameter of 16 mil so that's your radius 8 in here so part one, draw the given cam profile and plot the displacement diagram of full rotation. So the placement diagram uses distance 15 mil flips in each 30 degree uh, interval. And also on your drawing, determine and indicate a millimeter and maximum displacement distance. All right, so normally cam questions, well the norm should be, to give you how the displacement diagram is going to work and then draw the cam from that. But in this case, they're going to give you the cam and you have to work off that for the displacement diagram. Okay, so let's draw what's given first. Okay, so we have a radius 18 and a radius 8, and now they're giving you the profile of the cam. So they're telling you there is a radius 36, and the center of it is from this point here. Uh, draw that straight across, and where the involute ends, measuring 15, give you the curve, then then we have a tangent. So let's draw in what we have, okay? So this is point A. Now, before we put in point B and do the radius 15, we need to draw the involute of the circle. So before we do that, it's the involute of this radius 18. Before we do that, we need to divide it up 30-60, okay? And you can divide it up all the way either side. So to draw an involute of that radius 18 circle here, we need to get a portion of the curve on our compass, okay? So let's get... that segment there, so one of those segments, any of them, it doesn't matter, they're all going to be equal anyways, get one of them on your compass, right? And for an involute, what we need to draw is these uh, division lines, these radius 30s and so on, where it hits a circle, if you go 90 degrees to it, okay, perpendicular to it, out here back towards where it's starting, so starting at 8, back towards here and mark out on your first line one segment, it'll give you a point in the involute. The second line here, again, go perpendicular to it, mark out two segments, and you continue that on. So, you can see here, we go 90 degrees to the line, and we mark out one segment. That'll give us a point on the envelope. Do the same. this line here, go out perpendicular, and mark out two distances. And that's another point. So continue that on now, so the third line, three points, four, five, and six, okay? That's giving you point B down here. Okay, so that's your envelope Go from A, following along those points, back down to here to B. Okay, so when you find all your points, you can join them in freehand lightly. And then we can, from point B, we can go in 50 mils, find the center for that radius 15. And then 
line. It's a straight line then from those two curves, so we can put in a tangent. And that's the cam done, so we can draw the cam in strong now. Okay, so that's the cam drawn in strong. Now we look at the question. So we need to do the spacing diagram from this. So the question said that the cam is rotating anti-clockwise. Okay, so the cam is rotating anti-clockwise. It's rotating this direction. And if your inline knife edge follower is here, and it's rotating anti-clockwise, the first point that's going to hit that knife edge follower is to the right here. So our labeling goes clockwise if it's rotating anti-clockwise. So we've already divided up 3060. We might have to actually extend those out a bit more. So we need our 3060 lines to extend out to meet the actual cam. So we have that there. We have them here. This one here now needs to extend up. Okay, so that should be all of them now. So this will be your 30 degrees in here, 60, 90, and so on. Okay. So let's move over to the right hand side here now and do our displacement drawing. So the nearest approach is point A there, so bring that over. We'll get all the way the cam, we'll keep it around here. That's going to be point A, okay, or zero degrees. It said use 15 mil for each 30 degree line, so we need 12 of them. So measure over every 15 mil and get 12 of them. Okay, and draw them all up. So we don't know the height of it yet until we do until we finish this basement diagram. So draw them all up, ready to get a height. Now normally you draw the spacing diagram and work back to the cam. So normally you'd have heights here, you'd project them over to the center line and rotate down. In this case we have our heights and we need to rotate up. So everywhere our 30 or 60 and so on meets the cam, there are points. So ignore the in-blue points here, they're not our points at the meantime, uh, for now for the cam. They're actually wherever these 30 degree lines meet them. So what you want to do is get the height from the center to your point. Rotate it back up to the center line and project that height over. And now this is a point on the displacement diagram. So it goes from A at the bottom up to that point there. Okay, we'll do one more to show you and then we can fast forward. So distance from the center to your point. So again, your height there, you're rotating it back up to the middle line and projecting it over to your 60 degrees here in the displacement diagram. All right, and continue on with them now. That's our displacement diagram. Draw it in, connect the points all lightly, and then freehand, and then go over again strong. And that's your displacement diagram done. And one last thing, it said this uh, part two was on your drawing indicate uh, or determine and indicate in millimeters the maximum displacement of the diagram. All right, so the maximum displacement is going to be the highest point. So in this case, our highest point is this point here. 
Let's measure that. So I'm getting 43 mil. So I'm going to mark that over here to the left hand side. Okay, so that is the question done. We have our cam and our space and diagram finished. And that's it done. So I hope that helped. If it did, leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to see more DC tutorials. Okay, thank you and good luck.